All right, GM, GM, everyone. And uh, thanks for coming. Uh, how many people, before I start, how many people heard about uh, OpCat? You don't have to know what's it. Heard about OpCat? Okay, okay, you guys are gonna make it, okay. So, uh, a little bit of a history of, uh, do I have a clicker? How do I? Yeah, uh, so a little bit of history about me. So I've been working on the so-called Bitcoin and uh, script and uh, all kinds of opcodes, including opcast since 2018. I think it was before, I think most, if not all of the people have heard about this concept. So I've been really, you know, uh, passionate about this uh, for a long time. I'm really glad, you know, so many people show up in this uh, market condition uh, in the morning to, to hear, hear more about this uh, once an uh, esoteric topic, and now which is becoming more and more uh, mainstream. Uh, right. Oops, sorry. All right, so before I dive into, you know, OpCat, so it's, it's always good to know, you know, what, what, what is OpCat? And, uh, you know, before I introduce that, I have to briefly talk about the concept of so-called Bitcoin smart contract or Bitcoin script. Okay. I don't want them to miss your uh, very interesting uh, Okay, thanks, Eric. So, uh, Bitcoin script, right? So, how many people here have Bitcoin? You don't have to show me your balance, but just anything. One Satoshi is good enough, okay. So, when you have uh, Bitcoin, right? So, you don't want other people to, to move your Bitcoin, right? Usually, you can think about each Bitcoin, a so-called UTXO model, is the, all the, uh, the Bitcoins that are locked up in individual UTXOs. Think about almost like a lockbox. So you have, a, you know, if you have, this is a Bitcoin transaction, you know, you have inputs, outputs, but if you have Bitcoin, usually they are locked up in a, some kind of a UTXO, which hopefully only you, the owner, can access, right? Because otherwise, if somebody else can take a Bitcoin, that's not good, right? So you can think about every UTXO has some lock on top of the, you know, lock. And then when you try to spend it, you have to provide the right key, okay? So that's how, uh, you know, the Bitcoin, uh, let's say, access control works. And all of this, you know, the lock and also the key, you can think about that encoded in so-called computer code, right? So in Bitcoin, in Bitcoin world, we call it the Bitcoin script, okay? And um, next one, and also thanks to Eric, I think this is partially inspired by your uh, analogy, I think, which I like. So another way to look at Bitcoin script is think about Bitcoin, you know, I said earlier, you have a uh, script, right? Think about Bitcoin is uh, like a simple calculator, right? So hand -cal calculator, you have different oper operations. You know, you can add things, you can subtract things, right? So the basic, the Bitcoin script says, so if you do all this, after you finish all this computation, and if it ends up with to be one, then you are authorized to spend the coin. Otherwise, you are rejected. Uh, then that comes back to, you know, what is off-cat? So think about all these buttons, right, on a, on a calculator. You have, uh, you know, addition, you, have, you can push numbers, but then, of course, that's the famous, one of the most famous off code is called off cat, okay? First of all, if you've never heard about it, it's, it's not cat, okay? It stands for concatenation. So for example, let's say you push on this calculator. You first put uh, Hong, and then you put the second, you, you put Kong, then you, you cat them, it becomes Hong Kong, okay? So it was, it's not something completely new. It's in the first version of you know, Bitcoin in 2009. So it's introduced by Satoshi himself. And also later on, for one, about one year later, uh, he disabled it. I think uh, for, most likely for security reasons, with a bunch of other opcodes. I think about, so in total, you know, Bitcoin script have about, let's say, 128 opcodes or so. And out of them, about 10 get disabled. Okay, and opcat is the most, you know, interesting and also most pow powerful opcode among all those ten options. So, you know, we hear a lot of, uh, you know, thanks to a lot of teams, especially at Taproot Wizards, we are talk have a lot of uh, discussions, you know, bring it into the, let's say, mainstream discourse. Hey, should we bring opcat back? You know, people talk about. It. But before we even dive into that, so why, why, why do we even talk about this opcat? Why? 
why not just do some other, you know, bring some other opcodes or, you know, or maybe have some other solutions. The reason if you, is, you know, one of the biggest reasons, I think, if you look at this, di this diagram, right, for anybody who have been in crypto for a long time, you know, usually if you have some kind of like a base layer, base chain, and then you have some assets on top of it, you know, you can look at all this, you know, and one, one coin really stands out. I think probably a lot of people here, you know, probably see different variants of this graph. Basically, it says more than 99% of all the world's Bitcoin today is pretty much dormant. It's not being used anyway. I think the, one of the biggest reasons, if not the biggest, is just the so-called lack of a programmability in the, at the base layer in Bitcoin today. And that's why, you know, look at Ethereum. It's about half the you know, market cap. That's the whole ecosystem. But Bitcoin, you can, it's, almost, you can, it's almost negligible, right? So, you know, even here today, right, we, you know, a lot of you have Bitcoins. I, I, I have to assume most of your Bitcoin, you are not used in any type of applications. DeFi, staking, you know, now it's becoming more. So, you know, that's why we are very passionate about OpCat, why we want to bring it back. Sorry. Because it's really going to take us to hyper decolonization. Okay, simple as that. So why? And I'm not going to talk about all the details, but you know, it's coming back to the you know calculator, you know, analogy. It's like hey, now instead of uh, you know have that button disabled, it cannot, when you press it, it does nothing because it's just disabled. If we can bring it back, that means you can pretty much calculate anything you can comp uh, compute. You know, in the in the layman's term, that meaning a Bitcoin, at least in theory, when, once, as long as you have OpCat, which is just 10 lines of code, you can really do so-called you know, stateful contract. I think uh, the previous speaker also briefly talked about that you can, you can have uh, state machines. So if you look at all other smart contract blockchains, such as Ethereum, it's just logically, conceptually, it's just a state machine. So once you have, can have state in Bitcoin, with only the addition of OpCat, you can really, really make Bitcoin to do all, every smart contract you can do on other, any other blockchain such as Ethereum. I mean, we're not talking about performance yet, but so, you know, for example, you can have a Covenant, and then you have the recursive uh, version of Covenant, and then with that, you can build all kinds of DeFi applications you can think of, natively, everything on, on Bitcoin layer one. No uh, trusted third party, no uh, bridging, no, you know, uh, sending this to some cus centralized custodian. You can, of course, you know, Starkware is leading efforts to do, you know, even zero knowledge proof using OpCat. Of course, you can also do a vault. You can do all kinds of, basically everything. Okay, that's, that's the shortest answer. What can Bitcoin do? It's literally can do everything, other, any other blockchains, you know, they can do, okay. But simply reactivating OpCat is just, it's not going to do the job, okay? Because it's like, hey, now you have the calculator, you can re enable this, op this button, but it's not going to just, you know, simply lead us to hyper -pricalization. We still have a lot of work to do. So that's what we have been doing, you know, actually for the past six, seven years, okay? So of course we start with some other, let's say Bitcoin folks, because they have uh, OpCat, you know, so we started from, uh, Bitcoin Cash, because that's the fork that's first introduced, re-enabled uh, OpCat. So we have doing a lot of work uh, in this phase. I think we are probably the longest team who has been working on OpCat for the past seven years. So it's really, you know, it's uh, really glad to, to see it, you know, becoming more and more uh, mainstream. So the number one thing we did is, you know, uh, S script. So what, what does it do? So, you know, you have opcodes. So for example, you know, on the right hand side, that's like, uh, that's what uh, opcodes looks like. If you really broadcast it on chain, and if you look at it in some kind of like a block explorer, that's, gonna, that's how it looks like. So as you can see, if you are like a developer, uh, that's, that's not uh, the best, the best uh, language you want to code in. It's like if, uh, EVM, now you have opcodes, right? By the way, Ethereum also have this opcodes, you know. You can add things, uh, you just have more opcodes. But then the problem for Bitcoin is, even you have OpCat, you cannot do a, a, mo a lot of things on, on, in theory, but it, you are probably not going to write in native EVM code. And everybody you know, in Ethereum, as I know of, 
they don't code in EVL more code. They choose something higher language, right? They call Solidity or Viper. But in Bitcoin, because of the, the design of a script, it's very difficult, actually. It's, uh, you know, it doesn't have register. It doesn't have a memory you can read and load. It doesn't have like a jump, uh, jump uh, instruction. So it's very, very complicated. So that's what we have spent a lot of the past seven years in between this technology called the S-Script. So the, the way you can think about it is, it's just uh, JavaScript, okay? So we take the, let's say we take all the complexities away, abstract away, and we just write this, you can think about, we call it high level language called S-Script. So it's a subset of, uh, let's say JavaScript. So for developers, you don't have to learn anything about so-called Web3, if you're Web2, you come here, you're just coding JavaScript, and we take the heavy lifting of compile down to Bitcoin, smart, uh, Bitcoin script, including Opcat. So, you know, this, this for example, uh, anybody have a guess what, what this contract does? I think maybe the, the font is a little bit smart, but if you can read the, read the table, it's uh, basically a rewrite of Bitcoin, uh, BitVM smart contract. The, uh, uh, com gate commitment, okay. So this is what it looks like in, in script. I hope you don't want to do that, okay. So you would rather, for any, anybody who has programmed anything at all, Python, JavaScript, this is much more friendly. And this looks like a modern developer tool. So meaning you can use all your favorite uh, developing tools. You don't have to learn new language. You can use your favorite IDE, you know, uh, or testing frameworks, or debugging tools. Everything is ready. You don't have to, you don't have to learn from scratch, okay. It's just another JavaScript library. So this is the first thing we, we have been, we have done, and uh, I think now it's the most popular and most uh, battle tested uh, in production, you know, let's say Bitcoin high level language, you can let, that can let you to program con smart contract on Bitcoin natively, okay. And uh, what's good for, of a, let's say, uh, a programming environment, you know, such as EVM, if you don't have a good, let's say, the token standards. So we, you know, in Bitcoin history, you know, before the rise of ordinals, you know, there, there are also quite a lot of token standards. But none of the token standards is so-called uh, so smart contract verified. Because on every other chain, you know, e either it's uh, Ethereum or Solana, everything, the tokens, the, the transfers, the, the minting, uh, it's all verified at layer one, right, by the, by the node, by the consensus rule in a smart contract, except for Bitcoin. Because, you know, Bitcoin is almost only used in all those so-called uh, meta particles. The Bitcoin is just using it as a data availability layer. You are just dumping, you know, the data, the metadata of the token into a Bitcoin blockchain, and then you run some kind of indexer off-chain to, to help you interpret it. So that's why I think it's very difficult but we, we cracked the, 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 the code here. Basically, uh, we invented all this, this token standard called CAT protocol. So it's short for Covenant Attested Token Protocol. So basically, it's the first, I think now it's still the, and the only so-called smart contract verified token protocol on top of Bitcoin. And it leveraged, of course, our CAT, okay? So what, what, how is this different from, let's say, Runes or BRC20, other, or other type of, uh, Token standards is because first of all, you don't need to, you don't need indexers, because everything, you, you know, BRC20 when you send it, the miners don't, don't understand it at all because it's in so-called this, uh, you know, envelope which is not it's never executed. So the miners never understand. Hey, what I'm what I'm reading, it doesn't even know BRC20 or runes in that sense. But in the in the CAT20 scenario, all the the token, not only the data but also the logic. It's also verified by the miners, by the node software. So that gives us a lot of advantages. That means it's more uh, similar to ERC20. So you can program anything you can want. You don't need to change the protocol. You can, you can mint it with CAT20, and then you can deposit to any smart contract. And then you can do MM on chain, you can do uh, trust lending, you can do borrowing, you can do anything, basically, uh, Ethereum, they can do, okay. So, it's right now, you can check out on this website too. And it has been running on some uh, forks of Bitcoin that has off-cat, for example, uh, Fractal, and also you can run it uh, on Signet today. So this is open source, everything, uh, the spec and the code, is all open source, you can check, okay. And we have also done a lot of other things because we're being just 
we've been the, the team who's been the earliest, so we have done a lot of, let's say, pioneering work. For example, you know, when we have the, the BIP 347, right? Everybody is talking about, hey, how great it is, uh, OpCAD this can be, but it's very, it's not that accessible to regular developers. So that's why we take the task of, hey, we talk about all these great ideas, you know, Covenant, Vault, uh, you know, uh, Merkle trees, but how does it, the, the developers, they, can, they should not care about the low level opcode. So we, uh, we implement all this, let's say, most popular use cases of OpCAD, and it's all source, uh, it's written in S script, and uh, you can find them all open source from in, on our blogs. So we also happen to be the first one who's, who tried to do uh, zero knowledge smart contracts on Bitcoin back in uh, 2020. Okay, so but back then, uh, we didn't even know, hey, maybe somebody, some, sometime later, people are going to use this to build, uh, you know, roll up on Bitcoin, okay. So we just uh, using Bitcoin smart contract to code the first uh, snark verifier on Bitcoin, 2020. We also do, uh, you know, a bunch of AI and some other cryptography. We are all, always the, the first uh, in this field. So if you have any tech questions about anything about OpCAD, always uh, reach out to us and uh, we're sure we're going to solve it for you. So also we partner with our, a lot of uh, our great partners. For example, we work with Stockwell to, to help them to build the, the Bitcoin native bridge uh, to the layer two. And uh, you know, you can, you know, we, we, we published our, the official, let's say write up on the official you know, blog. So you feel you're more than welcome to, to check it out. All right. So where we are today, Okay, so I talk about a lot of uh, you know use cases, you know what we have been doing in this uh, offcat uh, you know ecosystem. So you know short answer is so we are here. Okay, so that's why why we are here today. Okay, and uh, today and hopefully more more events like this. So basically, you know every let's say upgrade has going through a very rigorous you know and uh, long process because. You know, that's no, that's no bad tactic in Bitcoin, okay? Satoshi is gone, it's not, probably not coming back anytime soon. So we have to, you know, it has the, the BIP and also it's now on uh, Signet and now we are here. This is the process. We are trying to reach some kind of community consensus before we are moving to the next phase, which is hopefully we have some kind of a, a client and some kind of activation, either USSF or minor activated. So, you know, we're also here to just today and uh, any any time before it's activated, we want to, you know, educate about people. Hey, what can what is OpCAD? What can you do? And uh, what is what are the potential risks? So we want to, you know, at least for people to have informed decisions. Okay, so w that's what all all we are here for. We love OpCAD. We hope uh, you love it too. And uh, you know this. Of course, it's very difficult to gauge, you know, let's say community, you know, consensus in a distributed environment. But at least, you know, there's some, let's say, strong hope here, I would say. You know, for example, this is, uh, you know, one of the, let's say, the uh, survey about developers for their support of different, let's say, opcode proposals. You know, for example, we have OpCAD here, of course. And we have CTV and CSFS and a bunch of other opcodes. So if you can look at here, what do you notice? Which one is, uh, looks to me, OpCAD, I mean, it's not scientific, but at least this gives you some anecdotal. It's very, very popular. If, I think it is the most popular you know, uh, choice, at least in this, not that scientific survey, okay? So uh, we are still, the community is debating, and we, are, we, we really look forward to more people to have this kind of discussion, to, to push this forward. So lastly, so I, may, I personally, I maintain this uh, like this open source repo on GitHub called uh, you know awesome OpCAD. Uh, basically, I collect everything I know of that could be helpful for for OpCAD. So of course, sometimes I have to also show the you know counter argument. But if you want to follow it, you know you can. It's free and open source. You are more than happy to contribute to it. We have all everything. If you don't know anything about OpCAD, or if you want to go really really deep into OpCAD, so this is the number one and a resource I would recommend. And if you're a developer, we also have a Telegram channel, so we, we post everything uh, about the technical discussion of OpCAD, so if you're you are, you are a developer, you're more than welcome to join uh, on the left, okay. 
All right, that's it. Thank you very much.